Do you see my screen now? Yes, I don't know if we should just take a quick break. Okay, maybe a quick break. So, Okay, should we get started? Okay, so um, so far in this uh, school, we have been basically discussing elastic uh, transport theory. And uh, with the, this lecture, I'm gonna talk a bit about how to go beyond the, uh, such uh, descriptions. And more specifically into this uh, software project we call Inelastica, which is a Python code to compute uh, molecular vibrations, electron phonon couplings, and inelastic uh, transport properties. And it's uh, basically also a, a bit of a history uh, talking about what we did long time ago uh, when I was a PhD student with the maths, uh, together with uh, also Magnus uh, Paulson, and we developed this. Uh, Python implementation that I will be describing today. A little bit of a, a brief motivation is maybe not so necessary in this uh, forum, but going almost 50 years back, uh, it was proposed theoretically to build a, a molecular rectifier using um, molecules between metal electrodes, uh, this famous paper by Aviam and Ratner. And uh, uh, significantly later, this was also pursued experimentally to try to address the transport properties of uh, individual um, molecules. So I have a little problem here with the animation. Excuse me. Try again. Here we go. Yeah. So uh, in this early paper here, using self-assembled monolayers on a gold wire in this break junction geometry, it was uh, attempted to uh, make metallic contact to individual molecules. And uh, these are some of the earliest uh, earliest uh, report on on this kind of break junction experiment to uh, chemically anchored single molecule junctions. And I wanted to highlight here is a little bit the order of magnitude. We're talking about the uh, micro, micro uh, amps passing through individual molecules and, and voltages of several volts applied across this kind of nano junction. And we've seen this kind of sketch. Uh, we build theoretical models for single molecule junctions and envision uh, some chemical potential applied to these uh, metal contacts. But it, it also raised these kind of questions. What about energy dissipation? We have volts across, and uh, where are electrons dissipating their energy? And eventually also, when such large currents are passing through individual molecules or individual atoms, what about the junction stability? So on one hand, this was a uh, motivation for us. Also, from a maybe different point of view, is about the characterization of nano junctions. And in this early work by Jaklevik and Lampe, they reported uh, in uh, voltage spectroscopy of metal oxide, metal tunnel junctions, features that they could trace back to the specific molecules that they had embedded in the oxide film. A real uh, step forward, I would say, is the, towards nanoscience was the invention of the scanning tunneling microscope. And uh, besides making nice images of uh, individual atoms and so on, this was also taken to the limit of uh, vibrational spectroscopy at the single molecule level pioneered by the group of Wilson Ho. And uh, what we see in the data here is the IV characteristic voltage uh, versus uh, tunnel current. Uh, with the tip position over an acetylene molecule or, or, or by the side. And the RIV characteristics are not directly revealing much. You see just these straight lines. But taking a careful look into the second derivatives, as was done up here, one start to see some small fingerprints that uh, were traced back to molecular vibrations. 
Another example is uh, the creation of uh, monatomic wires, as Matt also mentioned before, using the tip of an STM, basically crashing it into the surface and retracting the tip. One can form these kind of uh, metallic wires of, of a few atoms long. And here it was also experimentally reported how the conductance is uh, changing when you apply a voltage of, of characteristic vibrations of this uh, nano chain. And also another interesting report back around year 2000 was uh, the measurement of uh, transport through a single hydrogen molecule between platinum electrodes using brake junction uh, techniques. Where again in the second derivative of the current one uh, observed characteristic fingerprints related to the vibrational uh, degrees of freedom of, of the single molecule. So as I said, uh, for us uh, around the shortly after these works were these uh, inspirations to at one hand discuss uh, stability and dual eating and another one on this uh, ITS strategy to uh, really learn about the details of our nano junction and use it as a characterization tool. Uh, yeah, so this the Inelastica project is uh, a Python code that we have now in, in GitHub. And uh, it, it's basically a little bit of a vintage code, I would say. It's, it was developed uh, before CISL that we are using these days and before the many developments in the transistor code with the 4.1 series. So some of the tools we have here is a, a little bit of a duplicate things that can now be done much more elegantly with CISL, but it's somehow a pending effort to try to upgrade uh, these tools uh, to a more modern strategy. So coming back to this ITS, to give you a, a better picture for the mechanism, imagine that we have here a small molecule on a metal surface contacted with the sharp tip of an STM. And uh, when we apply a bias voltage, we can imagine now at low temperatures, we have uh, uh, incoming states from the tip side. And uh, in order to have a phonon emission process uh, in a Fermi and root picture, we need an empty final state. So this is something that can only happen when the voltage exceeds uh, the characteristic energy of a single phonon, H bar omega here. So this is what uh, leads to a threshold behavior as we can see here in the current versus voltage, what happens is that when the bias voltage comes across a characteristic phonon, there might be some correction to it. And this small kink might be difficult to see directly in the current because it's a small effect. It might be more clear in the first or second derivatives of the current as, as indicated here. This kind of correction can be an increase in the conductance as we see here. Or it can also be the other way around where the actual uh, scattering starts to reduce the current flowing through our device. And, and some of these features can be rationalized in terms of uh, transport through a single molecule where I'm indicating some relevant energy scales here. The phonon energy, the electron phonon coupling strength, uh, gamma is the effective broadening of our level, and then the biased voltage here. And then also separation of the ca current carrying molecular orbital from the bias window. And we can basically distinguish between three different regimes of resonance when this uh, carrying resonance is far away compared to the other scales, or on resonance if this one, for instance, is in the bias window, or vibronic regime where the coupling and the lifetime broadening of the state is very weak. And this is typically not the things we are, we are able to address with the techniques of, of transiester. So basically what we have in mind is basically these uh, kind of situations where uh, we have a good coupling to the molecule, but this resonant could be either off or on resonance. And we aim for a general description of such uh, behaviors. We've seen this already several times uh, in the transistor set that we are uh, participate, uh, partitioning the system into blocks due to the uh, formulation in this orbital basis. And uh, we can compute uh, transmission functions and currents following this formula here. But how do we go beyond that? If now, say, we have a vibration going on here and an elastic scattering process taking place in our device, we cannot apply this uh, theory as it's written here. People figured out uh, using non-equilibrium Green's functions how to address it in a more general uh, framework. 
And this is a celebrated formula by me and Wingren. In this uh, form I'm writing it here, we can express the current flowing out of a certain electrode labeled alpha here as this kind of a detailed balance equation where the Green's functions are now not the retarded Green's function we have heard about these days, but uh, this uh, lesser and greater variant of it basically representing the greater part for the empty states in our device and how they are being filled by electrons coming in from electrode alpha. But from that, we also have to subtract the outgoing, namely the field states of our device and how they go out into electrode alpha. And this is a strict uh, derivation that holds also when we have uh, different interactions going on inside our device region. So we can use uh, the Dyson and Keltis equations to express the device Green's function taking into account various types of interactions and specifically yeah, we would have the electron phonon interaction coming into play here as a self energy. And also in the, so now the more complicated part is that now it's not just a single Green's function. We have at least to work with two in this steady state uh, regime. So we also express uh, equations for the lesser and greater part. And the phonon self energy is take this form here in the approximation where we just consider the lowest order a diagram, Feynman diagrams to the self energy. It will involve uh, electron phonon coupling matrix elements, electron Green's function, and phonon Green's functions. Now, in principle, this could then be addressed also from an ab initio point of view. The complication here is at one hand, we need uh, a self consistent scheme. As you see here, the Green's functions depend on self energies, but the self energies depend on Green's functions. So, so in order to uh, to solve this uh, self consistent it would be uh, necessary to iterate and the bold phase notation indicates our electronic uh, space which is typically huge for uh, ab initio de uh, descriptions and there's also this additional complication of the energy integration that things are convoluted in energy that the self energy at one energy uh, couples to green's functions at different energies with the phonon energy so in order to uh, really make this feasible for ab initio simulations, uh, we uh, did the following of considering just uh, effects uh, to second order in the coupling M, as well as to make this approximation that the uh, vibrational frequencies and uh, energies are typically small compared to the variations in the electronic structure. So what about uh, evaluating all the electronic structure properties at the firm energy? So in this case here, we would simplify the equations by saying the Green's function is approximately the value we find at the firm energy, gammas at the firm energy, and, and spectral functions, and so on. Then we can come back to the Mevingren formula and make this expansion to second order in M. And uh, the, the attractive part is that the expression uh, can be uh, separated into uh, some uh, electronic structure terms, these traces that you see in this horribly long expression, uh, multiplied by some uh, functions that uh, take into account the uh, voltage dependence. Basically, uh, the functions that is shown here in the second derivative, something that is like a step function that leads to a peak or dip in the second derivative, and some asymmetric term that kind of skews the, the, the shape, line shape around the threshold energy. It's also possible to go a little bit beyond this, uh, keeping the idea of second order in the coupling, but allowing for some in, uh, variation over the energy scale of the phonon energy. And we found uh, some years ago uh, a little bit more general expression for these uh, conduct the trace part. The universal functions were the same, but how to get the amplitudes of those functions from each mode uh, lambda, taking into account uh, finite energy of the phonon. And as a note, because later today you'd have uh, the exercise of using Elastica, uh, this kind of uh, expressions are the default, but it's up to the user if one wants to to return to the to the to our initial formulations. One can play around with this uh, parameter lowest order scale that sets, uh, sets whether this um, finite uh, 
phone on it and is, is being fully taken into account or if this value is zero, we'd go back to evaluating everything at the Fermi energy. One slide about how we compute the electron phonon couplings in, in Elastica. This is based on a finite difference scheme. So we typically have this kind of uh, setup that we have our device reading coupled to semi infinite electrodes. And some subset of the atoms inside the device are allowed to vibrate. So we are, we are also thinking about localized vibration. The way this is then computed is that using siesta or trans-siesta mode, we move atoms in the Cartesian coordinates and save information about how the Hamiltonian changes and how the forces change. And this allows us to compute in a finite difference scheme, not only the dynamical matrix, but also uh, how the uh, Cohn-Sham Hamiltonian changes along these normal coordinates. And a little technicality by working in a atom orbital uh, basis is that when we displace an atom, we not only uh, perturb the system, but we're also expressing the Kunsham Hamiltonian in a different basis, the shifted one. And this leads to these pulley type uh, corrections that where we need to know a bit about how is our overlap matrix changing when we move atoms. And, and this is uh, a spe special uh, run that one needs to carry out for, for doing these simulations. A little bit of a, an overview of the workflow within Elastica. It's a set of uh, uh, scripts that you can run from your terminal. Uh, and the workflow is as follows. Typically, one starts with obtaining the junction geometry using standard relaxation. And on the one hand, one can then use this as a, for set up the transiator calculation with the coupling to the semi-infinite electrodes. In a parallel effort, we need to compute the vibrations and uh, electron phonon couplings. And um, this is then combined at the end of the day using the script that is called Elastic. So it's both the name of the package and, and the script that gives us the final output of this workflow. Uh, the package also offers other scripts like this uh, geometry utility that can convert between different formats. And PYTBT was uh, an effort to basically implemented a TB trans type of calculations in Python, but that's a long time ago and now everything is much better available in in, in CISL. And there's this script that Matt's talk about eigen channels to to really write the to compute the eigen channels and the scattering wave functions to a file that you can visualize. Over here we have uh, some scripts to help the user setting up the uh, final displacement runs, and this one to explore the change of basis when atoms move, which is then after finishing this uh, set of calculations, one can compute the phonons and couplings with the phonon scripts. And again, these things are then combined at the end of the day in, in an in elastic call, and you will learn about this in the tutorial. A few examples. Um, I would say that uh, uh, it has been applied for many types of organic molecules between metal electrodes. And here I show you an example where um, high quality experiments are compared with, with the output of uh, an ab initio simulation for, for a specific alkane uh, thiol molecule between gold electrodes. And the quantity that is shown here as units, so it's a direct comparison of the second derivative normalized to the first. And this is conventionally what we call the ITS signal. And uh, as what you can see here, not only can we make a link between uh, peaks related to specific modes of the molecule, but also absolutely the magnitude of the signal is, is relatively accurate, or say at least within an order of magnitude reproduced by, by the simulation. As I said in the beginning, we were also very much motivated by these experiments of characterizing atomic chains and the curves you see here um, present both experiment and, uh, and the theoretical simulation. And the little noisy black curves here are different uh, conductance measurements as a function of bias voltage at different strains of the wire. And the main, uh, this is the second derivative of the current down here. Now we see that the conductance is being reduced as we sweep the voltage. So here, uh, the effect of phonons is to backscatter electrons. Uh, and in principle, this kind of wire of a few atoms would have many vibrational modes, but if 
one looks at these curves here, it's basically like there's a main feature related to an, a phonon of the 10, 12 millivolts. I think Matt's also had this in his slide, but if we think of the infinite gold chain, it's basically this half field cosine band. And when we apply a voltage, we'll start to populate slightly more the forward moving states than the backward moving states. And at low temperatures, uh, an emission process would uh, lower the electron energy and it can only find available states here at the other side of, of the band. So it gives us kind of um, a selection rule for which modes that can, can scatter electrons, namely those where uh, uh, the phonon wave vector meets a change of the electron by two times KF. So it's the zone boundary phone and longitudinal uh, zone boundary phone and that can bring us from here to here at low temperatures. So it's a, a simple argument why there's one characteristic mode that is the active one for the gold wire. Another aspect I wanted to highlight at this uh, stage is the fact that uh, beyond the onset of phonon emission, we tend to see some slope that the conductance is not just a step here, but it really has uh, decreases further as we ramp up the voltage. And this is something we can also describe in the model by developing a rate equation for the uh, effective uh, mode occupation as written here. So there's some power that is being transferred to the phonon from the coupling to the electronic current. And then there's a damping term that brings us towards the Bose-Einstein distribution. Now, if uh, these uh, wires sustain enormous microamp uh, currents, so um, there can be different uh, effects here. First of all, uh, there are different uh, parameters for this damping here. And we can, two extremes would be that this, there's no damping or there's a maximum damping where every time an electron enters the chain, uh, you again see uh, um, the thermal distribution of modes. So it sets kind of a, a window here and we can even uh, try to extract from the slope here what would be the effective uh, damping of such a phonon in the wire to its, its environment outside. So this is the effect of, of heating, how the vibrational mode is being uh, heated up as, as the voltage increases. As a last example, and this brings us towards the tutorial today, is the vibration spectroscopy of a CO molecule on a copper surface. And uh, there was a nice, very nice paper uh, years back uh, on uh, not only uh, CO characterization, but also CO manipulation on surfaces. And uh, here you see it in the red dots indicated the position of uh, individual CO molecules that could be manipulated with the tip of an STM. And this paper addresses many interesting aspects of building uh, kind of uh, molecular cascades with CO molecules. Here, I want to highlight uh, an aspect where they use ATS uh, on this molecule. And what is seen is that uh, voltage range up to 40, 50 millivolts are two peaks. And those two peaks can be understood in terms of the vibrational modes of CO namely frustrated translation and frustrated rotation modes of the molecule. Now you see they're both a red and a blue curve here, and this corresponds to different isotopes of the molecule. And uh, due to the different masses, the vibrations are gonna change a little bit. And this is indeed what is being observed that the lighter molecule has a slightly higher energy, for instance, for this uh, frustrated rotation mode. So in the, Conductance curve, we have this uh, step here associated with the peak here. And now positioning our uh, bias voltage at 35 millivolts, the conductance is going to be higher when we are over the isotope with the heavier carbon than over the carbon 12. And it allowed them to make this kind of sorting of individual molecules on the surface and to write uh, carbon 12 and carbon 13 by the vibrational effect. And later, we also had uh, um, we also studied this uh, problem with experimental colleagues in San Sebastian, who um, not only characterized the molecule with the tip in the tunneling regime, but also approaching the tip to bring it into contact with the molecule. And uh, this uh, frustrated uh, rotation mode around the 35 millivolts was found to undergo a shift when it started to be in contact, chemical contact with with the tip. 
So here my colleague Aranga Tildeko might uh, be around uh, this afternoon. Uh, she carried out uh, extensive calculations using Inelastica to compute the vibrational modes as a function of the electrode separation and how uh, that affected the corresponding IHS. So on a general level, we could reproduce this kind of effect that when a new bond or a contact to the tip is formed, uh, this was a uh, frustrated rotation mode undergoes a shift in, in good agreement with the experimental data. Uh, to understand a bit uh, better what uh, is the origin of uh, the active modes and the so-called propensity rules, it's very helpful to look at the elastic eigen channels as Matt's introduced in the lecture before me, because um, it's a, it's a, you can think of it as a basis change where we only have to consider uh, scattering rates between these uh, eigen channel states. So for the CO molecule between uh, with a contact with a metal tip, uh, this problem can basically be understood in terms of three uh, active eigen channels. Uh, two of them with a pi type character that is traced back to the molecular resonance, the two pi star resonance of the CO molecule plus something that is more of a rotation and symmetric from the um, S-wave uh, tip side. So what we see here, we have three channels, but we can in each of these channels send an electron wave from either left or right side. And if we ask ourselves uh, for transverse modes like this, this is the frustrated rotation mode, how can this scatter uh, between these uh, electronic states? So the kind of deformation potential this mode was set up with the transverse motion would be like a, uh, an odd uh, deformation potential. So what I'm trying to sketch is we're looking at, at this kind of um, Fermi-Golden rule rate, bringing us from one scattering state into another mediated by a phonon coupling matrix element. And if we have this transverse mode, we cannot scatter, we cannot obtain a totally symmetric product if if we start from an S wave and want to, to leave in this S or, or sigma hiking channel. Now, what we need is, for instance, an incoming S wave scattering against this uh, odd function and into one of the pi and vice versa. You can also, you can start in a pi state and scatter into a sigma. So it's possible to get uh, this um, these rates expressed with Elastica in uh, uh, between the eigenchannel scattering states. So for instance, in this specific problem here, uh, the problem is boiled down into a three by three matrix of rates. And it's being identified numerically that the uh, scattering process that dominate this problem is a scattering from an S wave initial state into the uh, pi states of the, um, on the CO molecule side. So this kind of eigenchannel analysis helps us to understand which are the underlying electronic transitions that can occur due to symmetries in, in the problem. So by changing the symmetry on the tip side, one can put different molecules on the tip side um, and then explore the interplay between the the orbital symmetries and the intensities of the inelastic signal. So for instance, if the tip is replaced by a CO molecule or this uh, C2H4, uh, one can suppress dramatically the, the signal from this frustrated rotation mode because we have effectively uh, suppressed the, the S wave character from the tip side by having the extension on a pi type uh, molecule. So this brings me to the tutorial we prepared for you today. Uh, it's a simple representation of, of this problem of a CO molecule on one dimensional change. It has a number of limitations that you will see because it's not uh, the same electronic structure to put a molecule in this chain geometry as on, a, on an extended surface. Nevertheless, it will allow you to, to play around with the physics that I tried to explain today. So with this, I would just like to acknowledge many people that uh, have been involved over the years, in particular Matt and Magnus, who, with whom we, we, we worked hard on this problem and coding things up. And I thank you for your attention.
So I'm happy to take some questions. Asa asks, is it possible to do phonon calculations for many electrode systems using Elastic? And this is an excellent question. It's not possible with the version we have at GitHub at the moment, but uh, we are working on on extending this to based on a CISL implementation to make it compatible with the new Transiesta. And I know uh, Jonas, who is also here in the audience, he has been uh, coding up uh, things in this direction. Uh, how about the homo lumo gap effect the validity of this approach? In case you have molecular vibrational states. Mm. So general rules, I think this is what you're asking for. Um, when uh, the homo lumo gap is large, you can still um, have the excitation of the vibration modes, but then we are working in the off resonant regime and uh, the effect of a, a phonon is basically to help you tunnel in through the molecule and you'd see increases in the conductance. So general rules is a little bit this about uh, whether we are on or off resonance, whether the conductance signal is positive or negative. Enrique Morim is asking, is it possible to have relaxation time with this methodology? Um, uh, wonder about which relaxation time you're referring to the phonon relaxation time or because uh, or the electronic uh, relaxation time because we are not really able to handle uh, bulk uh, problems with this method as I explained the outset from this development was um, localized vibrations in some kind of nanostructure able to account for optical and acoustic phonon scattering separately. Okay, so maybe this was not so clearly expressed. We have uh, a finite number of modes, basically the dynamical region for each uh, vibrational atom, we have uh, three degrees of freedom. So we get three times N vibrational modes. And uh, so, so we have everything resolved mode by mode. It's also possible to use Inelastic to compute uh, phonon band structures and couplings in the uh, inbox systems, but not in terms of inelastic transport, like uh, Boltzmann transport equations, for instance. I see no further questions. A li little bit, a uh, few words on the tutorials. We have prepared two tutorials for Inelastic. Uh, the first one is was what I was sketching here, the, going through the workflow of doing an IV calculation using Inelastic for CO molecule between one dimensional chains. Uh, the second uh, tutorial is about eigenchannels as Matt's described. And as an example, he's using the uh, electronic structure that you obtain in the first exercise. So you need to take them in this order, do the, the first tutorial before the second. There's a question now about MPI. No, it's not parallelized. Uh, sorry. So the code is probably not, uh, the interesting part from the coding side would be to really bring it in line with uh, all the tools available in, in CISL. Yeah, Jonas is making a way of regarding the parallelization that uh, it is parallelized in terms of OMP if you have a proper uh, installation of your NumPy library because Elastic is based on NumPy. So in that sense, yeah, it's it's there's a parallelization option. 
but it's not coded into in Elastic. Thank you. Thank you all for your attention.